It was like being a child again and rediscovering all these sensations. I'm Garrett Salpeter, and I believe that the most powerful and transformative way to help people recover from pain and injury, heal from trauma, and reach their highest levels of fitness and performance is to focus on the nervous system. In this podcast, we'll share knowledge from the frontiers of neuroscience and inspirational stories of how applying that knowledge has empowered people from all walks of life to heal, adapt, and grow. On this episode, I'm joined by Amy Selinski, who shares her story of how she's used NuFit to recover from paralysis 25 years after her original spinal cord injury. It's a very inspirational story, and I'm so excited for you to hear it next. It is a pleasure to be here with Amy Selinski. Amy, thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> and I'm really excited to share your story. I think that everyone listening and watching is going to find it super inspirational. And it's, it's been an absolute privilege to get to know you and, and work with you over the past few years. And I'm, I'm excited to, to dive in here. So uh, can, you, can you just tell us a little bit about your original injury and, and some of the backstory? Yeah. Yep, so um, I was originally injured uh, almost 30 years ago now. Um, I was thrown from a horse. I broke my neck at um, C6-7, for anybody who knows about vertebrae and where those are. Um, and then I also broke my back at T12. So um, originally, like right off the bat, I was completely paralyzed from my chest down. I had no feeling, no movement. Um, I wasn't breathing on my own, so I spent about four or five days on a ventilator. Um, yeah, it was, it was incredible. Um, so I spent a month in like a regular um, hospital, and then four months after that in a rehab hospital, just trying to you know, get anything back. I started to get a little bit of feeling back. Um, my hands and arms were initially very weak. Um, that strength kind of came back, uh, you know, fairly quickly and spent a lot of time building that up. I got a little bit of movement and some feeling in my legs, but not enough to actually do anything functional. So, um, you know, over the years, I would try to go back to therapy and, you know, do different things to try to maximize, you know, the, the return that I did have. Um, and again, I would see slight improvements sometimes, but not enough to make like a difference in my day-to-day -day life it wasn't anything you know functional that would happen so mm -hmm. um so basically i mean you learn to learn to live with what you've got and you know i never never let it slow me down i you know lived a good life so Heck yeah <laughs> yeah 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 and, and so um when we first met it was about th three years ago mm -hmm. um you had, you had a little bit of sensation in your legs uh what what actual function did you did you have? Did you... Um, so I had a little bit of quad muscle where I could extend my leg out a little bit, but um, I couldn't get a full extension. Like, like it'd go out a few inches, a few yes, degrees. Yeah. yeah, a few degrees out, so um, I couldn't really like hold it there or anything mm -hmm. like that. But um, On both legs or just? Both legs, but my left leg was a little bit stronger. That's right. Yeah. 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 And were you able to wiggle your toes a little bit? Um, or... Just a tiny, tiny bit. Not really like... You could get just a little bit of a movement out of it, but nothing significant. You gotta look really close to see it. <laughs> yeah, under the microscope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta be watching it very carefully. <laughs> okay, okay. And then, uh, uh, can, you, can you share the story of your, you know, our first time meeting and working together and, yeah. and you know, what your experience was in that first session? <laughs> yeah, so um, so a friend of mine, uh, Jeff Davis, knew one of the one of the trainers here and, mm -hmm. and they were kind of talking and he had said that, you know, there was some um, some uh, improvement seen by people with spinal cord injuries. And so uh, Jeff introduced me and came in for the, the initial evaluation and really I had zero expectations. I kind of just came in with an open mind. Let's see what happens, you know, and if if I get a little bit of improvement, that's great. If nothing happens, that's great. You know, life's fine. I'll 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 be good. And so when I first came in, um, you guys did like a full evaluation. You know, I went uh, laying on the table, and you basically tested every single muscle and um, to see what was what was getting anything. And it was it was kind of strange. You know, obviously the. Um, to feel the electric current going through my body in different ways and it was like making weird things react and and uh, um and it was funny because afterwards like when i left the session 
I kind of I had a strange feeling and I didn't know exactly what it was. First, it was just kind of like an adrenaline kind of thing from like the current going through my body. But then later that night, I was thinking about it and it was weird because it kind of showed me all the things that I couldn't do because I hadn't tried to move those muscles in so long that it was a little bit like, I just don't ever focus on what I couldn't do. So it was weird to like have it kind of thrown in my face a little bit about, oh, you really can't do all these things that, you know, you just don't even try. And so, um, so that was a little bit crazy. And then that night, you know, I, I went to sleep. The next night I went to sleep and I woke up at two o'clock in the morning and felt like, I think I can move my leg. And I remember pulling the covers back and pulling my knee all the way up to my chest and just being in complete shock, you know? And it's two o'clock in the morning and I can't tell anybody because everybody in the world is asleep, you know? So I remember calling you that next morning going, all right, sign me up, what do we need to do? This is amazing. So, yeah. I remember that. And, uh, wow. I think, um, I think it's, it's so interesting just to, to spend a moment and unpack that because mm -hmm. You know, in that first session, you know, it's an impossibly short period of time right. for, for you to build new muscle or you know, generate new nerves or really make significant neurological, neuroplastic changes. And so to, to some degree, I think, I think we have to conclude that you actually had that ability already within you. Mm -hmm. You just, as you mentioned, you, know, you were just so used to not being able to do things that we get into this, this pattern of, of learned disuse, you know, right. since you can't do something, you don't do it, and then you kind of prevent yourself from from even trying or even, even right. doing any of it. Right. And so, so in the beginning there, I think it was it was a process of of lifting off those those governors or those protective mechanisms mm -hmm. where you had learned not to go outside of that that little box. Right. And then, uh, you know. Through the, the signals and the feedback from that first session, your, your your brain and nervous system started to learn that there was something outside of that box. Right, right. Kind of um, like woke my brain back up yeah. and go, oh, there is some stuff down there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then and then uh, let's talk about the you know the the, the subsequent three years. So we, <laughs> right. we had that, that first session early on where we're we're you know tapping into to function that, that you already have. And then at some point, very, very soon in that process, we had to transition into this longer term process of trying to tap into neuroplasticity, try to teach your nervous system to adapt, whether it's actually rebuild pathways or, or make new connections to, to create new you know, detours or pathways. Mm -hmm. um, so, so can you just, can you talk about uh, you know, the, the, the three years since then and the consistent work you've been doing and, and you know milestones that kind of stand out along the way for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, so definitely in the beginning it was a lot of just, um, you know, reconnecting my brain to those muscles. And so in the beginning we would start and a lot of times um, Austin would have to actually move my leg through the movements. And so that, and while he was doing that, I was consciously trying to you know, have my brain find those muscles again, and then they, they would start to, um, you know, start to work on their own. And um, a couple of things, you know, I expected, especially after that first thing, that I would start to see some, you know, reconnection in the muscles and, and rebuild strength and function in that way. But what really surprised me was when I started to, like my sensation started to improve. Um, and I was, you know, I thought that I had fairly good sensation until it started to come back even more and then I realized, oh, I was probably only at maybe about 40%, you know, and I, I feel like now that um, the sensation throughout my body has gotten closer to like 90%. So um, that was amazing. I started, before I wasn't able to feel hot and cold temperatures below my level of injury. So like from my chest down, uh, like my the example I always go to is like in the shower. I could feel the water hit my leg, but I couldn't tell if it was hot or cold. Mm -hmm. And then one morning I was in the shower probably, I think it was maybe at the most two months after we started, and the water hit my foot, and I was like, oh, that water's pretty warm. And then it hit me, that water's warm! I felt that water <laughs> warm on my foot, you know? And so it was, it was an amazing moment, you know? And, and 
it was like being a child again and rediscovering all these sensations. Like the first time I put my bare foot on a cold tile floor and like, wow, this is an incredible <laughs> feeling. You know, like I forgot what this feels like. And so, you know, all of that was amazing. And then, um, and then the other thing, and I remember very well the text message I sent you when this one happened was, um, <laughs> I was not able to sweat below my level of injury before, which of course, it's very common with spinal cord injuries. Um, and it's actually really not good for your body because that's obviously the way your body regulates heat and you know, cools, your, cools you off. And uh, I remember I was out exercising one day and um, when I went to get back in the car, I realized that I had been sweating. My butt was wet, you know, from sitting in my chair. And I remember texting you and being so, who gets so excited? My butt's sweating, you know? And so um, I remember texting you that and you, you asking me, can I share this? Like, I was like, yes, of course. Like, normally I would never want anybody to know that. But this is an incredible thing and I, I want everybody to know. So. Um, so, like, those type of neurological changes really surprised me because, you know, it, and it also really illuminated for me how much this goes through your entire nervous system and it's not just directly into that muscle and, you know, like, it's really reconnecting everything. If you're ready to supercharge your practice, listen to this. Garrett and Team NewFit have just released a new online course entitled Introduction to the NewFit Method. In this detailed eight-hour course, you'll gain mastery of the fundamental techniques in our practice, including muscle testing and activations, nerve glides, and joint articulations. You'll also get introduced to our patented direct current stimulation device, the Nubi, an incredible machine that's empowered professionals just like you to help their patients heal, adapt, and grow faster than they ever thought possible. To learn more, go to www.neu.fit. And now back to the show. So one of the other really, really cool things that stands out to me in my mind was when my hamstrings started working again. And this one, because it was so, it was so incredible the way that my brain reconnected. I mean, it, it, I can't even describe what the feeling was because, um, so when I first started, I didn't have any hamstring movement at all. Like I couldn't even contract the muscle, let alone get any type of movement out of it. And so we were really working hard on hamstrings. Um, you know, we put the pads on, we do it over and over and still wasn't getting any, um, any movement out of it. And there was one time, um, Austin was doing the exercise with me. I was laying on my stomach. We were um, doing a hamstring curl and he would have to pull my leg up the whole time. And the whole time I'm concentrating on those, those hamstrings. Um, I can feel the current going in and in there and all of that. And then on the third set, it, he turns the machine on the current goes into the hamstring and it was like immediately I just felt something incredible in my brain I don't even know how to describe it it was like all of a sudden my brain said I know what we're doing now and I was able to pull my leg up on my own and so it was just there was there was just a switch that went off and it was like I you don't you don't feel your brain so it's weird to think that all of a sudden you felt, I felt like, it was almost like a movement in my brain, where it, I don't know, it was like a cartoon light bulb went off, like you felt that, you know, thing, and so it was just, it was amazing, and that was, that was one of the biggest things that, that has always stood out for me. Um, and then one of the other things, you know, we obviously started with, uh, we took the approach of, let's relearn to walk the same way that a baby does. Um, and so we started with um, learning to roll over and um, you know that's incredibly hard to do when you have no core muscles um, and so as my muscles got stronger we were working on that and you know I can just remember so many times laying on the floor and rolling over and rolling back and it was, I struggled so hard and now I can do that and I don't even have to think about it anymore you know and so um, that was incredible and then um, and then we started crawling and you know, working with that and crawling forwards and crawling backwards and, um, you know, getting into a kneeling position, basically just mimicking all the steps that a baby does because obviously the baby's doing it in that order because they have to build up those muscles to be able to get to the point where you can walk again. And so um, it was, it's a really cool approach and it's, and it's working. So. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then around the, right around the end of the first year is, uh, I think, when you started standing with hand support, taking your first yes. couple steps. Yes. 
Um, and then we had our, the uh, that long hallway in the old office. <laughs> yes. And can can you talk about your 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 progression from being introduced to walking to you know breaking the four minute mile? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I mean, when we first did it, it was kind of like walking across the width of the the treatment room yeah, like, was like was like a, twelve feet. Yes, like was a milestone. Barely. You know. Yes. And then it was like. Okay, I can do that easily now. So let's walk the length of the, um, you know, of the treatment room, and that was a little bit longer. And then we got to the point where that wasn't enough, so we started going out into that hallway, and it was, um, you know, we were tracking all the time, like how far could I go, and then how fast could I go, yeah. and um, you know, I remember one time making it all the way down to the end and back again without having to stop and rest. You know, like we got to the point. It used to be that Austin would push the chair behind me so whenever I needed to sit, I could sit and rest. Yeah. And then we got to the point where we could just leave the chair there. I could walk all the way down the hallway and back again mm -hmm. and, you know, be good. So, uh, so yeah, it was just amazing to, to feel that build up. And then um, when I started walking on the treadmill, uh, that was even more, you know, amazing still because, uh, you know, you have to work at a different pace. And, and even when I started that, you know, I would stand up walk a little bit and then rest and then walk and then I would have to sit down and then you know stand back up again walk a little bit more rest walk a little more rest and and then I got to the point where I was standing up and still taking breaks to rest in between the walking but being able to stand up for like 45 minutes and not have to sit down you know so That's awesome. yeah yeah definitely just amazing <laughs> you know I'm still I'm still in awe every day of what what I can do now and and how things have changed and just still looking forward to what what more is happening you know just keeps getting better <laughs> and, and I have to applaud you for being so consistent and diligent and you know as we kind of zoom out and reflect on the last few years you know, there's there's obviously significant progress. I mean, mm -hmm. we have movement. We're able to walk with the walker and then do far more than ever before. And and as enormous as that is, when we zoom in, you know, the week over week and month over month, it's the you know these really you know small victories, these right. little these little small but distinct and tangible bits of progress. Right. Uh, right. And they've really added up to something special. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a lot of work, you know, and, and I come in three times a week, usually for an hour and a half at a time. Um, so it's it's definitely a, a big commitment and it takes a lot of effort. You know, I mean, it's yeah. not it's not one of those things people sometimes think like, oh, well, you just put the electrodes on and they do everything. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's definitely not the way it works. You know, you have to actually put a lot of effort in yourself. But, um, but it hasn't been, you know, people say, oh, that's, you know, it's really incredible that you can continue to do that and like how do you make yourself get up to do that and everything but it, it's not hard because you I'm seeing progress all the time mm -hmm. so it, that's the motivation to come yeah. back in all the time because why would I not <laughs> you yeah. know yeah. If you, I mean, that's been so fun for for me and inspiring and exciting just to even watch week over week literally it's like you know, like back when we were in the old office it was you know, first, as you said, it was a few feet, and then when you could walk the length of the hall, it was you know, it was like 13 minutes, and then yes. you know, that, that four-minute mile, it would go right. down you know, a minute or two faster yes. every week, every two weeks, and then you know, eventually breaking down, breaking four minutes and getting even faster. And yeah. That was so cool. Yes. Um, uh, can, you, can you share with everybody, uh, just you know, this past holiday season, there was a really, really yes. cool story with your family. Can you, can you just share yeah. that with everybody here too? Yeah, so I got to the point where um, I was actually using my walker at home quite a bit, you know, as far as like, because at first it was just doing it during therapy sessions, and then um, I got to the point where I could actually walk around the house a little bit at home, um, and so I had some, my sister and her family were coming into town, and we were going to meet them for dinner, and I said, I think I'm at the point where I could actually walk into that restaurant with the walker. Um, and, and the funny thing is, this is my sister who was riding horses with me the night that I got hurt. So oh. she was, she's been there with me, obviously, from the very, wow. very beginning. Um, and so I didn't tell anybody that I was going to do it. <laughs> and so... Um, we went to the restaurant. I made sure everybody else got there first and was seated and then went in and I walked and at first they didn't notice 
And then uh, my brother-in-law looked up and saw me, and he was like, you know, like the expression <laughs> on his face, and he kind of tapped my sister, and they started watching, and the whole restaurant is watching me, you know, as I'm walking in. Of course, nobody else in the, the room knows my story. Um, and so as I get closer, uh, you know, I, I locked eyes with my sister, and I just started crying, and she started crying, and it was just... You know, the most amazing thing, that was the first time I walked into a restaurant in 30 years, you know, <laughs> so it was, it was really, really a, an amazing moment, you know, just, I never thought that that would happen again, you know. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. You, uh, you, you've given me chills. <laughs> yeah. You I feel like me. I'm going to cry right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank so, you so much for sharing yeah, that. You're welcome. So, uh, what's, what's next? You know, I don't even know. I mean, we're just going, you know, taking it day to day, just keep keep working at it, keep getting mm -hmm. stronger. Um, you know, I really, like, my goal is to get to the point where I'm using a walker most of the time and, and the chair, you know, not very much at all, mm -hmm. and then progress to the point where maybe I don't even need the walker, you mm -hmm. know, so that's... That's my goal, and I'm keep working for it. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, we'll have, to do yeah. another, we'll have to do another episode to check in right. as, as you reach those, those next frontiers of yeah. progress. Yeah. Uh, this is fabulous. So thank you so much for sharing your story. You're uh, it's certainly inspiring to, to me and our team, and I hope that, that people out there find inspiration in it and that you are such an amazing example of, <laughs> of how you know, we can adapt and overcome challenges. Right. And, and although we used to think that the nervous system was hardwired and couldn't rebuild or adapt or make these types of changes, I mean, you have shown that that we can. So yeah. thank you for, for being <laughs> such an inspiration. You're welcome. Thank you for everything you've done for me. <laughs> it's our pleasure. It is absolutely our pleasure. Oh. Thank you, Amy. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you so much for listening to the Undercurrent Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date as we release future episodes.